Hello boys and girls, good morning. I hope I find you well. We thank the Lord for this opportunity again to share the word of God. I hope you had a marvelous week. Today, before we start our lesson, I want you to take a look at what is on this table. I've got three things that I want Matipa, who is with us again today, to show us. Please can you show us this one, which is a novel. That's a novel, you can see it. Can you show us an album? where we put our photos, our memories, great. Can you show us a book with uh, short stories, children's short stories? Wonderful. So these three books as they are, I would like to ask you a question, which I'll also help you to answer it. What if we only had one copy of each, the whole world? Like for example, one novel in China, one storybook in Zimbabwe, then one uh, photo album may be in Nigeria. Just an example. The problem is if we had only one of each, some people were not going to have the opportunity to hold them, maybe to read them and to know what is inside and to have the privilege of storing up their photos and everything. Thank God this time because of printing machines, we now have got millions of these things around the world and it's helping so many people to have a look, to read the truth, and to also learn from the stories in here. So the printing machines also made it very possible for all of us now that we can all have copies of Bible, we can read it, we can understand it at our own pace, and learn a lot. Today's story is about a time long back ago when the Bible had to be written out, by hand on a scroll, I'll show you a picture of a scroll, then these scrolls were very, very precious. So they were kept in a safe place in the temple. Most people couldn't read and write, so they could not find out for themselves what God has said to them. And I'm sure like now all these books that we've talked about are kept in a library. If you want to read a novel, you just walk into a library. Long time then, this scroll was kept in a temple only to be held by important people like preachers, like uh, teachers of the word. Before we continue with our lesson, rise up and celebrate Jesus with this song, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate.
And I celebrate Jesus. And let me celebrate. Wow, boys and girls, it was a beautiful song. I love it very much. Today's passage is coming from Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Ezra reads the law. Our main aim today is the importance of listening to and responding to God's word. So, from the passage, the people of Israel had been busy building the walls of Jerusalem. At last, the job was finished. The last job was to build something very old, just inside the walls, in the opening area by the water gate. They had to build a large, high platform where usually the preachers stand there to share the word. So very early one morning, Nehemiah, their leader, called all the people to meet at the water gate. They all gathered in front of the platform. Then someone called out for Ezra. Ezra was one of the teacher who teached the law, and he was also a priest. Suddenly everyone said, say, we want Ezra. Then the moment Ezra heard his name called, he stepped forward to the water gate. When he walked forward to the platform, he was carrying something very special. We said when we started our lesson, this thing is called a scroll. Here is a picture of a scroll so that you will understand how it looks. That's the picture of a scroll where all the laws of Moses were written and only the teacher or the priest was allowed to carry it on the platform and it was kept in the temple only to be taken off when the need arises like today as Ezra walked to the platform. He scrolled it out, he opened it like the way it is on the platform so that he can read out the laws to everyone. Ezra began to read from the scroll. Everyone who was around, children and men and women, they all got excited and began to shout, praising God. They went down on their knees and their faces nearly touched the ground in praise. So they went on to say, praise God, praise God. Ezra started to read early in the morning. He read and read until lunchtime. Everyone was just listening. There was no break time, guys. Everyone was there, all about how God had looked after his people when he had lived in Egypt, how they had escaped and how they had lived in a desert. He went, went on until lunchtime. Now it was time for Jamin and his friends and the Levites to take part. They studied the God's word. As Ezra was reading the scroll, they went around the people explaining further to them how God had cared for his people even though they had disobeyed him. As the people heard how much their great-great-grandfathers disobeyed God, they began to cry. The seat was filled with the sound of weeping because the word of God was saying God looked after them despite that they were disobeying the Lord. Our great father indeed, he's a great father. He deserves all the praise that we today and forevermore. When the people were weeping louder and louder because they were touched that their forefathers were disobeying God, Ezra called out from the platform, don't cry, he said. This is a day of happiness, not tears. The city walls are finished now. God has been so good to us. Stop crying. That was Ezra's words. Nehemiah urged everyone to go home and have a great feast. There would be another time to tell God how sorry they were. For now, they went home happy and enjoying that Jerusalem was up. And they were also reminded the love of God that he showed to their forefathers. A very touching story, right? The Israelites, they wept because their forefathers had sinned, but God had mercy over them. I was so touched with the time that it took to read the Bible, to read the scroll I meant from morning to lunch time. How many hours is that? This is a very big commitment. So it comes back to our aim of this subject that the importance of listening of the, to the word of God and responding is our main aim. Like what the Israelites did, they gave it more time. 
they listened to it attentively. And then after that, they gave their hearts to God. They praised the Lord for his goodness. Same applies to us boys and girls. As we read the word of God daily, whether in church or at home, let's put our minds together. Let's listen. Let's respond to it. It's good for us and it also pleases the Lord when we treat his word as important as is. Last week we listened to a little verse, a little hymn, which says the best book to read is the Bible. We're going to listen to it as well. Then we do our memory verse and we do our prayer in closing. This comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. I will repeat, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Today our prayer is in a responsive manner, so we all do it together. As I go through it, I've got others in the house, Matipa as well, and Tadiwa, who are also helping in our prayer. So your part will be, thank you, Lord, for the Bible. If I first read, that's the prayer, then you say, thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We are now starting. Father God, you have given us your word. You want us to know about your love. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for the Bible. Bible. There are so many interesting stories in your word. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for the, the Bible. Bible. Sometimes it makes us feel sad, especially when we hear how you died on the cross. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for the Bible. Bible. But it makes us feel happy when we hear that you rose again from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Sometimes it makes us feel sorry when we realize that we don't always do the things the Bible tells us to do. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. But it makes us feel glad when we read that you forgive us for the wrong things we do. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. And it makes us feel safe and special because it tells us how much you love us. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for the, the Bible. Bible. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for your time. I hope to see you next week. This has been the passage, and I'm sure it will make a difference. Have a good week until we meet again next week. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>